Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second video on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. So I've been printing um, quite a bit of ASA on this printer now, so I wanted to do a, another video on kind of the ASA material and my experience with the printer and kind of just do a bit more thorough uh, review of it. Um, first I want to say if anyone's interested in this printer definitely go on to the Bamboo Lab Discord. Um, there's a whole bunch of information on there. If you have questions you can search on there and find out you know anything about this printer that's not covered in YouTube reviews or anything like that and uh, hopefully it'll give you more information to make a decision on if this printer is right for you. I um, have had some issues with the cold plate uh, sticker. So when I switched over to ASA, um, the cold plate says it can print ABS. So ASA and ABS basically print at the same uh, bed temperature. So I was printing some ASA on the cold plate and after about two or three prints it started bubbling and um, failed. So I don't know if that was incorrect, uh, if I did something wrong, um, definitely it would have been the same temperature printing with ABS, so I don't know why the cold plate says you can print ABS, and I do even believe the Bamboo Lab chart on what materials can print on what side of the plate, it lists ASA as a printable material on the cold plate, um, but it failed and I had to remove the sticker. They do include two additional uh, stickers for the cold plate. And the sticker did come off very, very easily. However, I just flipped the bed, uh, the spring steel sheet over to the engineering side and I've been using the engineering side. The engineering side does not have a sticker, it just kind of has a coating as far as I can tell. And ASA prints perfectly fine on it. So I'm going to be using that side for ASA, uh, ABS, and I've also printed PLA on it as well. It's totally fine. So. Um, that's been my experience with that and uh, we are going to go through the startup procedure on this printer as well here so you can kind of get an idea on its startup, how loud it is, that type of thing. Um, Bamboo Lab does sell on their store now a PEI um, build plate, uh, so a textured PEI build plate now which I would recommend uh, you order. It definitely gives you more options and I'm not a huge fan of those stickers on the cold plate, so. Um, another kind of odd thing too with the printer is, uh, from the printer itself, you can't actually print previous prints. Um, you have to use the phone app. So on the phone app, there is a history tab under your profile and you can reprint uh, prints from there. And I think that's mainly um, due to the cloud printing, probably. I'm not too sure. But um, again, as a reminder, this printer does not have Wi-Fi printing. It only has cloud printing. Um, of course, you can print via the SD card as well. But if you're wanting to send files to the printer right from your computer, um, it is cloud only, so just note that. The Bamboo Lab um, app does work very well. I've had no issues with it and it seems like um, the release version of the app is, is very, very nice. So what we're seeing here is we just seen the tool head do a nozzle wipe and uh, it's most likely going to go bring the bed up here and it's going to do the bed leveling. So generally I'll try to do bed leveling for every print. Um, most of the time for this printer, I'm just printing small mechanical stuff on this printer, so um, I'm not really going crazy with huge big prints like helmets and things like that. That's just not what I print. I usually print functional mechanical parts. And so far the accuracy is excellent. All my holes, my like M5, M3 holes are perfect. So we can see it's doing a nozzle wipe there again. So this printer does have a procedure basically where it uh, heats the bed up 
and then it'll heat the nozzle up and do some purging and then it'll also cool the nozzle back down to about 140 so no oozing happens and then it'll do its bed mesh. Once the bed mesh is done it'll go back heat the nozzle up again and then start actually doing printing. So it's a little bit of a lengthy startup procedure but um, it's to be expected and it's automated which is a really big thing about this printer is for an enclosed printer, you have to have these features. You have to have nozzle wiping, and it shouldn't. you shouldn't have to open the door and clean off filament from the nozzle so that it doesn't wreck your first layer. This handles all of that. And that's a huge strong point of this printer, is how well the startup procedure for this printer is. So we can see here it's actually going to uh, home, and then it's going to start doing the bed leveling. So it's... Um, does a vibration calibration for the bed for whatever reason, I don't know why, but it'll uh, home the center of the bed there just with a, um, it's basically a sensor on the nozzle, and then it'll actually start doing the bed mesh, which we're seeing there right now. So, um, I have uh, ruined the first hot end. It was my fault. Um, I, I, I was switching from PS, PLA to ASA and um, I didn't load the filament properly and I basically I started printing the uh, without any filament in the nozzle and um, it clogged in the nozzle. I couldn't get it out. Uh, I tried multiple different things. I tried all the suggestions on the Bamboo Lab Wiki and I had no luck. So luckily there is a replacement uh, hot end uh, with nozzle in the uh, accessory package and I swapped that over and I've had no issues so uh, most likely my error with that. Um, I will say again I really don't like the um, bolts that they use on this printer. The um, actual uh, part where the allen key goes into is very shallow and you can really really easily strip these um, bolts if you're not careful. I know a bunch of people have complained about them on the spool holder on the discord and some youtubers had some issue attaching them it's just i don't know what it is they're too low profile and they don't have enough um material for the allen key to really bite into um just be cautious you will uh strip them if you're not careful i i haven't stripped any of mine luckily but just be very cautious especially if you're doing maintenance on the printer that type of thing so far, the hardware on this printer is really, really good. It's, been, it's really thought out. Um, I think Bamboo Lab have proven that carbon rods do work for the X, and that's how they're getting the crazy speeds out of this printer. I don't know where they're getting their rods from. They seem to be maybe from Aegis, um, and they must be machined or turned on a lathe or something like that for them to be nice and... Um, straight and have good tolerances on the outer diameter so um, everything else on this printer seems very very well built the door is um, very very nice it's got some nice resistance when you open it it doesn't feel flimsy at all again this is the x1 carbon so it does have the webcam uh, the filter the frame is metal and the panels are glass the carbon is generally for printing um, more, I guess, exotic filaments, uh, polycarbonate. Um, obviously, it's better for ABS, ASA, that type of thing. If you're going to just print PLA on this printer, probably just the Bamboo uh, Lab X1 would be completely fine. I've had awesome results with ASA. It's printing out very, very well. Um, Here's kind of a sample uh, print here. The, the first layer is, is like a mirror. It's awesome on the engineering plate. These work really, really well. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming ABS will print really, really well as also on this printer. I just don't have any on hand. I'm going to be ordering some ABS. And I'll probably do a follow-up. I'll probably do a third video that shows ABS printing and also TPU. I've got some, I think I've got some NinjaFlex TPU that I've never actually used. So... This will be the first time printing um, NinjaFlex uh, TPU. So if anyone wants me to try out some TPU prints, link me some, some files online um, and I'll, I'll print out some TPU examples as well if anyone wants to see some smaller ABS prints. 
I would uh, be able to do that in my third video for sure. So ASA is printing great. Um, this printer is about 1450 uh, Canadian. That doesn't include shipping, and that's the non-Kickstarter price. So it's definitely an expensive machine. Um, I think the regular X1 is about 1200 or 1250 Again, that doesn't include shipping. So I think if you print a lot of very large models and you need to print ABS or ASA or filaments like that, this would be a great printer for you. It definitely will save you a bunch of time. Generally, this prints about 30 to 40% faster than any of my printers. Um, it's tuned well, it's dialed in, the Bamboo Lab slicer works really, really well, and the, all the profiles seem to work very well. Cooling's, cooling is great, overhangs and bridging work really, really well. Like I say, most of the parts I print are mechanical, so they have all those features and I have no problems with them whatsoever. So, I think this is a really great printer for someone who doesn't want to tinker. They want a reliable workhorse printer that can print um, whatever filament they throw at it. Um, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a printer if you just print PLA, unless you want the speed and you really want the ease of use, uh, then definitely maybe just buy the X1 and uh, this would be a great printer for that too. So definitely, like I say, uh, join the Bamboo Lab Discord. There's a lot of good information there. Um, I haven't really had a whole bunch of issues other than the ones that I've noted. Um, I hope that Bamboo Lab does eventually add Wi-Fi printing to this printer so you don't need a cloud service. That'd be really, really handy for sure. But like I say, so far this printer has been awesome for me. I haven't probably stressed it as much as um, other YouTubers or other people just because I generally don't print huge parts. Um, I was more going so from a perspective of speed and also does this print ABS and ASA very well and so far ASA is printing absolutely flawlessly. So just note the build plate there. Um, like I say the cool plate definitely some people have reported bubbling and I've had I had issues like really quickly when switching to ASA on that. Um, but yeah that's kind of a wrap up of my overall review. Uh, and like I say, my third video will probably just be going over maybe some ABS prints and also some TPU potentially. Um, I don't print polycarbonate or carbon fiber per, uh, filament or anything like that, so I can't really touch on that. But I would imagine this printer is going to handle that quite well. Bamboo Lab does have uh, replacement parts on their website for this printer, and they are very reasonably priced. So I'm really happy to see that. So yeah, um, I just want to say thanks everyone for the new subscribers. We're over 1,500 now. I really appreciate all the new Patreons as well. If you have any um, comments about this printer, feel free to put them below. Like I say, if you want me to print something out in ABS or TPU or something like that, definitely let me know. I can do that and show them off in the third video. Um, yeah, that's kind of a wrap up everyone. And like I say, thanks everyone and uh, tune in next time for my third uh, episode.